Hello everyone and welcome to the video call-in show. That show that invites you, yes you, to be a live video guest on this show to talk about whatever you want to talk about Monday through Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tonight, however, we have a special show lined up for you. I've interviewed a special guest and we're going to get to that right after this. Welcome to the show, everybody. Today, I have a special, special guest for you. He's a two-time Emmy Award-winning writer and producer for both F is for Family and The Simpsons. I want everyone to welcome Michael Price. Hello, Michael. How are you this afternoon? Um, great. Hi, Jim. Great to be with you. <laughs> it is so great to have you. I, uh, I am such a huge Simpsons fan. I, I must admit that uh, F is for Family... I've missed a lot because I, I killed my Netflix uh, subscription not too long ago, but after getting back into it, dude, I'm I literally may just re up my Netflix uh, subscription for that show alone. Good, good, that's good. <laughs> send send a clip of this to Netflix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they know, they know, they keep us on the air and uh, keep us going. I, yeah, that's great. <laughs> I will indeed. Um, <clears throat> you've got quite the resume, my friend. Quite the resume. I was very impressed. I, um, I, the full disclosure, I worked for a local television station in the 90s, and I, I did most of the airing uh, first run for Simpsons because it was Fox Station. So not only am I a huge fan, but but I'm what, looking at some of these credits, I'm thinking, I almost know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, From a local yeah, television. I've been working for a while. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That that sounds just like somebody who's worked at a local television station, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you you got um, you've got a, a, a theater degree, one or two theater degrees, is that correct? Yeah, I have a bachelor's degree in theater from Montclair State uh, College. It was called College then; it's called University now in New Jersey. Okay. That's my near where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And then I went on and I have a master's degree, an MFA in uh, theater directing from Tulane University of New Orleans. Wow, uh, which I never really. I never really did much in the theater after that, <laughs> but uh, I think it, it informs what I do now. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, I still feel like I'm a little bit of an actor and a little bit of a director. Well, you did. Yeah, you did say you're involved. So I, I got to know, is, um, is is it any sort of productions we might recognize back in the day? No, I mean, I had a uh, my some friends of mine that we uh, went to college with in New Jersey. We then started a very small theater company uh, of our own in New Jersey, in Newark, New Jersey, called the Ironbound Theater Company, where we put on plays, and we also wrote our own plays and uh, directed and acted and everything. It was a group of around 12 of us or so, and for about four or five years, we just worked nonstop on putting these shows together, and it was in a small theater, but it was our own thing, and it was really great. We all had other regular jobs. It wasn't a paying thing at all, but it was just labor of love that we really enjoyed doing, and... Um, and I miss it, you know, but it was, it was fun. It was time to, then it came time to sort of figure out like, how am I going to earn a living in this world? <laughs> and uh, luckily uh, for me, I was always a huge fan of comedy and TV, especially growing up as a kid. I just watched TV all the time and um, uh, especially comedy shows. And uh, I was living fairly close to New York City in New Jersey at the time. And I got involved in doing improv sketch comedy in, in New York. And that's what really got me kind of on the road to where I am now. Well, you and I are not too far uh, uh, apart in age, I'm guessing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I totally get that watching television growing up. <laughs> yeah, it was, and plus, plus it was, I mean, growing up in the New York area, we had five channels, I guess. You know, there were like the three major networks and there were, there were six channels. There were three major networks and there were three local stations, Channel 5, Channel 9, and Channel 11, that showed just every old movie every old rerun of every old TV show. Uh, so I grew up literally just like watching every single um, like Abbott and Costello and Marx <laughs> Brothers and W.C. Fields movies and even like the Bowery Boys, like all these really corny old things, but I love them so much. And I, as a kid, I was just fascinated with everything to do with Hollywood, um, never thinking that I would, you know, eventually move out here and live here, but uh, just loving it all. and. And then when I got in high school was when like a huge comedy boom hit. Mm. This is now like the early to mid seventies uh, with like Monty Python first came to the United States and Saturday night live and S uh, second city TV. And um, 
it was just like wow that was for me just like that was like my punk rock you know <laughs> like watching uh, <laughs> watching monty python on sunday nights on channel 13 which was the pbs station in our in in new york and uh and i always kind of nerdy friends theater people and i was in the marching band so all these kind of band nerds and we just <laughs> completely just talk about monty python the next day and how great it was and i just ate up everything monty python isn't that the best? I mean, I think we grew up in one of the best times uh, you can grow up in, having uh, to watch those first run. What's yeah. <laughs> God, it's like we were separated at birth. Uh, <laughs> so you work uh, now on, um, you still work on The Simpsons, and yes. uh, you're, you're working on uh, F is for Family with Bill Burr, right? Yes, yes, the great Bill Burr. And what, uh, what season did you say that was in now? Well, uh, season th- uh, our first three seasons are currently uh, you know, streaming on Netflix right now. Uh, season three came out uh, around Thanksgiving of last year, and we're in the middle of writing and producing season four right now, which will be coming out uh, roughly a year from now. Awesome. So it'll probably be out around this time next year. It will be season four. Oh. So uh, we're in the middle of it right now. We are just about to, um, we're up to around, in the writing process, up to around episode eight of ten and uh and the, but the initial animation is coming back of the early episodes and we're putting it all together and it's it's very very fun and very intensive but it's great well you obviously have a passion it. yeah you obviously have a yeah. passion for it uh, being being involved in both of those big shows um yeah and well, the simpsons is so nice to me uh because what happens is when when a new um season of Officer family gets gets picked up or ordered uh it takes about four to five months of just really intense work to work on the writing aspect of it, which is what we're doing right now. And so uh, The Simpsons has been very, very nice to me. And uh, they let me just basically just go away for four or five months, kind of like a hiatus or a sabbatical, if you will. And I just come off and I work here full time at Ephesus Family. I'm in my office right now here. <laughs> and then, um, so we'll be done with that that phase of the Ephesus Family production in a couple of weeks by the end of April. So then when that's done, then I'll go back to The Simpsons and I'll just be at The Simpsons every day <laughs> and I'll occasionally do uh, editing and, and things like involved in the production of the Officer Family season for until we're done. You know, but the, meanwhile, meanwhile, my day, my regular job will be back at The Simpsons. So they've been wonderful to me. I can't thank them enough. It's been just uh, they've been so great because <laughs> they could have said, no, you have to quit or whatever like that, you know, which would have been a tough thing because yeah. I love that. I, I love that show so much. And uh I can't believe, I still can't believe that I get to work. <laughs> Same here, my friend. I do love that show. And I love Bill Burr. He is one of my favorite comics of all time. And I got to ask, great. yeah, what is it like working with such an explosive guy? I mean, you know, he's... <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not that way in, in real life. You might, you might be surprised to learn. I mean, he's... Not really. I, mean, I don't think anyone could be. <laughs> I don't know how you could be that way and, and still live. You know, uh, I mean, I mean, his... His comic sensibility is the same, you know, but he doesn't, he certainly doesn't go around, you know, exploding and yelling and screaming and <laughs> going on rants. He reserves that know? for F and, and of course his podcast, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when he comes in with the work with us, uh, he's very funny, of course. Uh, and, but he's just, he's just one of the writers in the writer's room and uh, he's hilarious and has <laughs> a great perspective on material and the characters, of course, because so much of it is based on his own experience you know, as a kid growing up. And, uh, and so, um, but in terms of that volatileness that you see on stage, you know, uh, he saved that for the stage mostly. And he's <laughs> wonderful with us. He's great. Oh. We'll get We'll get in arguments about things, just things that not, not, we don't argue that much about the show, but we'll get in like discussions about what's going on in the world. And he'll, he'll sort of, you know, say what he, what he believes, which is largely what he says on stage in some way or not. And then sometimes we'll get in discussions about that and it can become a little heated, but, but certainly not like, <laughs> what you see on stage or on his podcast or anything like that. Yeah. I, I still, I still imagine him, uh, like you said, with, with a, mm, a light filter. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if he, if he's something, really, yeah, really he's a sweetheart. He's a, such a sweet, wonderful guy. Something uh, passionate. So, I can just see him going. <laughs> he absolutely is. No, he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, I truly love him. And uh, I, again, I feel really lucky that I got to work with him because, uh, you know, he had no shortage of people who wanted to do things with him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was my pleasure to help him, you know, bring life to this idea that he had many years ago of mm-hmm. taking a lot of the stuff that he does in his act about his family and about his father and about what it was like being a kid in those days and, and bringing it to life in this way. So, um, 
I'm feel very honored to get to work with him on it. Well, speaking of which, I, I was watching an interview with Bill, and actually I've seen it twice now. Um, I don't remember. It's the Uncomfortable Chair interview. I'm sure you're probably aware of that one. Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where he was saying that, uh, yeah, the character uh, Frank was was virtually based on on some of his father's uh, mannerisms uh, when, when Bill was growing up. But he also said that uh, some of the other writers interject some some of the mannerisms of their father. My question is, how much of your father, or or actually, how much of your family is in that? Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, you know, my dad would be, was the complete opposite of Frank on the show in that he was never a yeller and screamer. Um, he was very quiet, but he had kind of a quiet anger about himself that would manifest in unusual ways. So actually, one of the first stories when I first met Bill because what happened was that Bill had the idea to do this, to do a show, and then he he met up with uh, Vince Vaughn and his production company. It's run by uh, Peter Billingsley, mm -hmm. and so they they said let's let's develop an animated show based on on Bill's life, and so uh, they needed a, a kind of a seasoned or whatever you want to call, you know, a person who was used to writing for animation to help come in with Bill to to help write the show and then sort of be the showrunner. Mm -hmm which is what I do, like the head writer of actually writing the show. So I came in and met, and um, we talked about it, and so I told some stories about my dad, and this one particular story I told is the one that Bill said that that's the one that like made him realize, okay, this is the guy I want to do the show with. <laughs> and, uh, and we've been trying for three seasons to get, it, get this moment of my dad's life <laughs> in the show. It's currently in episode um, four, I think, of our new season. We'll see if it makes it all the way through or not. Well, I, I <laughs> cross, but uh, basically... Uh, my dad would get his anger out, not at us, uh, but he would get it out at like inanimate objects or, or other things, and occasionally the television. So there used to be a commercial in the 70s for this cigar called White Owl Cigars. I remember that. And the commercial was an actor sitting there with a cigar in his hand, you know, kind of like this, and he'd go, he'd go, you may not smoke these White Owl Cigars now, but if you take one puff, you will, because we're gonna get you and that was the that was the slogan <laughs> we're gonna get you you know and he'd sit there really smug like that going like we're gonna get you like that you know so <laughs> that commercial was on a lot it was on all the time especially during mets games yeah and so it was one day where my dad must have been mad about something else we don't know what it was but that guy said that and this was the breaking point so the guy goes we're gonna get you and my dad goes you're not going to get me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> He's yelling at the TV. And so my brothers and I were like looking at it like, what? You know, I don't I can't remember even at the time if we laughed, <laughs> laughed or not, or we laughed later. But it's the thing that we always remembered. My brother and I always remembered. And I told Bill that story. And he's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's so funny. <laughs> so um, that currently is in an episode where Bill, I'm sorry, Frank is watching the TV and that same thing happened. So we'll see. So that was my dad. Um, I'd say Lar the, the aspects of the show that come from me, uh, some of the fam, some of the brother, the brother stuff. I have three brothers, and you know we got along in various degrees of, you know, fighting with each other and so on and stuff like that. Um, the aspects of the show that really came more directly from me in my life was kind of the neighborhood life, because uh, when you develop a show, you know we had the basic character, the Frank character, and we knew he'd have these three kids and his wife. And then it was. It, it, then it came time to sort of like build out this world of like, okay, where, where does he live? What does he do for a living? You know, so those are the kind of things that I brought in. So I came up with this idea of this cul-de-sac that they lived on because I lived. I grew up on a cul-de-sac in New Jersey, and the neighbors and the weird neighbors. So the one weird neighbor named Mr. Goomer is based on a neighbor of mine who was a little weird. He's not as bad as this guy <laughs> because we're cartoon, you know, we sort of tend to go a little crazy. Uh, we had a babe. We had a we had a neighbor that everybody called Babe. So that's this guy, Babe. You know, and he always wore this kind of sleeveless. T an Italian guy always wore a sleeveless T-shirt. The guy next door, Vic, that Sam Rockwell plays, is very very loosely based on my best friend's dad, who lived uh, at one street over. His name was Vic. Uh, to my to me, my dad was worked in heavy construction. He worked for a construction company, and so uh, this guy's dad worked for a worked, worked for a um, a record company. New York City. So I was like, wow, that's this guy is cool. You know, yeah. he's in show business. He's so that sort of that kind of turned into this super caricatured version of, you know, the character named Vic. Uh, so that's things like that, you know, and, and then and then I really thought the whole thing that uh, Frank working at an airport came about because I thought it would be funny that he would have this 
badge on his uh, shirt here, his ID bag, that would just say baggage. You know, so that always makes me laugh. It just says, this thing says baggage. So, you know, like emotional baggage. So, so that turned into, okay, I guess he, when we got to the second episode, we had a show now. Uh, it was like, okay, I guess he works at an airport. So let's see what that's about. So then we then we created this whole airport and this whole airline. <laughs> I came up with the idea of it calling Mohican Airways, and then which is kind of based on Mohawk, which was an old air, regional airline mm. of, of, of the time. And then I really liked the idea of, of it's horrible, but the kind of uh, mindless racism of that time. I mean, that's part of the tone of our show is sort of setting in this, the 70s where everything was sexist, everything was racist, everything was terrible. You know, there was pollution everywhere, but that was just, that was, that was a way of life, you know? So it really felt a really, a really rich area to come up with this airline based on uh, uh, you know, American Indian stuff and how terrible they were. And then the boss at the airline who Dave Keckner plays, Bob Polgo, this gigantic, awful, gross dude. Uh, he was literally based on a guy that was my boss when I worked at, in college. Uh, I worked at a Sears Auto Center in New Jersey and uh, the guy who ran it, who ran the place, we, everybody called him Bob, Bob Pogo. And uh, I forget what his real name was, but they called him Bob Pogo. And he wasn't as horrible as this guy, but he was a pretty big, fairly slovenly guy who would eat giant sandwiches and smoke at the same time and like bark, bark out orders and stuff like that. So <laughs> that's Bob Pogo. So that's, that's, how, that's how a show gets put together. And then, then, once, we, then we put, once we put a, a writing staff together and we started like writing the shows, then we just asked everyone, like, what are your stories? What happened to you? You know, so there's one of our writers, Emily. She had a story that we use in the show, which is that she and her she and her brothers or friends created like a slip and slide made out of um, just a bunch of um, plastic, like sheer plastic. And they created like their own slip and slide in their lawn. And she did it and like tumbled into the street and almost got hit by a car. You know, so, <laughs> so that, that became a thing that happened with Maureen. So that's what happens. Like you, you sort of you pull from life much as you can well it's got to be the most fun thing in the world is to literally uh take those those small instances of life and then you know boom blow them up is it is it yeah. not yeah <laughs> yeah super fun and i have a little bit of a game where we're uh not a super game but like where uh, i i'm slowly working in the names of all the teachers i went i had high school with as as teachers at our school or names and you know so this year there's a couple of characters that were in the show last year uh that were game okay, one of them was uh Kevin's two friends, when he went to summer school, he met these kind of like juvenile delinquents. And one of them is named Newber after a kid I went to high school with named Paul Newber. And one of them is named Moorhead after my brother's friend, Cliff Moorhead. So it's really fun to like, name everybody and <laughs> we're working with the names of all our teachers and things like that. It's, that's that's a little, just a little extra fun. Do you ever get people to recognize their, you know, that the, the, they've been, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say parodied, but, uh, you know, uh, replicated for lack of a better term? Uh, not yet. Only, only with my friend Paul. I said, Paul, get ready to watch. You know, watch the show. You're, you're going to be in it this year. And he was like, Oh, he didn't. He didn't look like anything like this guy. <laughs> he was a little bit of a stoner at the time, but uh, you know, but it, you know, but it's just fun. Yeah. But no, no one said no. No one's called me up and said angry. Like, hey, that's me. <laughs> well, I didn't mean just angry. I would think yeah, that right, some right, people, right. Would, yeah, be yeah. flattered. Absolutely flattered. Yeah, <laughs> so. Um, now, now I, I want to ask you about the uh, the writer's room, for for lack of a better term. It's it's not the writer's room of days of old, right? Where a bunch of people sitting around smoking cigarettes, Absolutely. a couple of typewriters. Is it the same thing? Well, there's no smoking anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work. I mean, I've, my first job ever in, in TV was in 1993. Um, and that Which was you... when people were still, people were still sit, sitting around smoking and yeah. everything. I showed, showed off to the guy who was, was like a chain smoker. Uh, but not anymore. But no, we don't sit with typewriters, but we do sit around like a writer's room is basically like a conference room where our, our writing staff is about 10 people, including myself. And uh, on any given day, we're all there. Or sometimes we split a few off to work on some other things. But we're, we mostly all sit around the table and we have two writer's assistants who sit off to the side. And there's a big TV screen that has the, the actual pages of the script that we're working on on the monitor. And as we work through it, you know, I'm, I'm usually running the room, meaning I'm in charge. So we'll have a script that's already been written. Like someone else, one of the writers have, have, have written the first draft of a script. And so I'll say, okay, this is good, but you know, I think we can have a better line here for Frank, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then everyone, what they do is just called, it's just called pitching. Mm -hmm. So you just pitch, you just say what it is. You, go, you don't say, how about what if Frank said this? You actually just say it. You say, I'll put you through that wall or whatever it is. And you, and you pitch it. 
and then and then you know the, the ideas kind of bounce around and usually one lands that everyone everyone can has a feeling for it of like that's the one <laughs> and i'll tell you that's the one write that and then because that went in it now changes what was in the script the next line okay well now we need a better line from from bill or from sue and then we write to it that way right and we just very slowly go through the script that way yeah a lot, it's all very collaborative a lot of bombs thrown in there and there <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we laugh really hard. Sometimes someone will say something that there's no way you could possibly use it on a show. Even though our show is fairly like anything goes, but there's you know there's certain lines that even we won't cross. But sometimes you just say it just because it's stupid and it's funny and it's ridiculous, but it kind of clears the air and like it makes room for the next thing that you could use. And it's all very it's very collaborative. It's very um you have to be kind of supportive of everybody. Um, it's like one big giant game of improv where where you're building on what the next person said or the last person said and, and everyone has a common goal which is to make the script better and to get done in time to not have to order dinner <laughs> we want to go home and have have a dinner with our families and uh everyone has kids and or is married or whatever and so we just want to get out and get get through the day and, and finish the, finish the script and, and you know do it get a, a good draft of the script that we didn't when we come back tomorrow, we work on it some more, and then we polish it some more until it's ready to go. Sure, and it's got to be so liberating uh, compared to, like, The Simpsons, for instance. I mean, there's so much more uh, you can get away with uh, on F than, yeah, than you can on The Simpsons. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, because because we're on Netflix, uh, you know, we can, we're able to say whatever we want to say, and and the characters swear and things like that, you know. Um, and, and a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> And we see, we can show things and there's nudity, there's nudity on the show and, you know, things like that and graphic violence. And, graphic you know, but that's why, that's why it's fun to do. Like, I wouldn't want to do, I mean, I couldn't do another Simpsons. Like, there's only one Simpsons, yeah. you know. So, so I had a chance to do an animated show. Uh, it would have been futile to try to say, well, I'm going to do another exact version. You know, I'll do another Simpsons. Like, there's only one Simpsons. So, so it was really fun to have this world and, and be on a network like Netflix where we could do this, we can mm -hmm. push it. And even though it's animated uh, and we get a little crazy sometimes, like last year we had this thing with a cow that rolled down the hill and fell in the tiger, the tiger enclosure of the zoo. You know, we try not to be too crazy or too cartoony. We try to stay more or less true to life. And so we always feel like this is the way people talk, you know, uh, that's, that's what happens. But the Simpsons of course is, you know, is the greatest, animated show in the history of the world and it's been on for seven close to 700 episodes so uh when i go back there it'll be a whole different it'll be freeing in another way because i'll just be one of the guys in the room and i won't be i won't be the guy sort of keeping everything like the master plot of all the episodes in my head or or something in my mind where like uh we can't use this character because it means we'd have to pay this actor to come in for one line so the budget isn't that you know so i'm thinking about i'm thinking of i'm juggling like you know, many, many things in my brain while I'm running the room. And when I go to the back to the Simpsons, uh, someone else, Al Jean is our showrunner, uh, you know, usually running the room there. And now I'm just the guy sitting in the back room, just saying funny Homer things or <laughs> crusty or like that. So that's a whole different, it's liberating to go back there too. Oh, well, that's so a good back to the family. Then I'm like, Oh, I finally get to be the guy. In charge again. Right. But that actually uh, brings up a, a good question that uh, I now have. Um, you're, you're saying that you, you yell out maybe a, a Homer or crusty thing. Yeah. Do, you, do you find that people will, and, and this doesn't count for people who would actually play the part and they're also writers. Um, right. <laughs> do you find that people will, will hone in on specific characters in the writing room and, and uh, speak more to them than they will the other ones? Uh, not really. No. I mean, we all have people that we like to do characters that we like to write for or that we are fun to do. Mm -hmm. And we kind of do, like you said, like, uh, cause for instance, Dan Castellaneta who plays Homer and Krusty and Barney and everybody, He's a consulting producer on the show, so he'll he'll one day a week he'll be with us in the writers' room. It's just one of the writers, and so uh, it's always great to have him here. He's a he's a great guy anyway. But um, but we tend to when we're pitching, uh, especially for me because I'm an old I was an actor. You know, it helps to sort of think like the character. If you're coming up for a, a Homer line, you want to sort of put yourself in Homer's mind or Krusty's mind or Mo. So uh, we will tend to pitch a line it's sort of in a version of the character voice, you know, so like a Sue line, I mean, a, a Marge line, we'll say, well, homie, like, we'll all do our version of Marge, or we'll all do our <laughs> version of Krusty, or I'll do our version of Mo, or or I'm pretty good at doing like Dr. Hibbert, like, <laughs> like that, you know, so we'll just, you know, you sort of, it sort of helps to sell it, because you're, because you're essentially, when you're pitching the line, you're trying to sell it, 
in a way to the guy running the room like that's the one that should go in so it help, anything that helps you get it in there and how better than to be in character right or at yeah, least pseudo character so it's fun. absolutely it's fun. So, I, so i'd say like there's certain characters that like for me personally i love crusty because like i said like i grew up watching all those old show busy things like the marx brothers or like phil silvers or those old shows you know like sid caesar or whatever so um Crusty to me is is that he's like the embodiment of every single old time showbiz guy rolled up into one. So I love Crusty, uh, and I, I I'll do the Crusty voice that way or Mo and whatever. So like that's the way we do it. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, so like if we're pitching on a Crusty line, you know, for the, for, for 15 minutes, like there's there's eight Crusties in the room, and they're all we're all saying things like Crusty. <laughs> God, it sounds fun. Actually, that yeah, that, that sounds like a, a rip roaring good time, almost as good as the show itself. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until somebody says something uh, truly cringeworthy, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that has to happen. That actually oh, it has, does. has to happen. Yeah. Sure, it does. But like we're all we're all we're all old friends and you know, we all just laugh. And like there's things that you'll that's why they say like the writers' rooms it, it, this is before the Las Vegas thing came out, you know, what happens in the writers' room stays in the writers' room. <laughs> you know, like you'll hear you know, people in writers sitcom writers' rooms will say things that like if they were set out in the in the real world would you know, would be met with uh, a tremendous amount of shock, I'm sure. <laughs> but like, you have to sort of be able to free, feel free to say whatever you want to say, and it helps. It helps get to the funny thing that gets in the show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, clear something up for me. Um, you know, how how long have I been watching The Simpsons? Uh, actually, since Tracy Ullman. Right. And, yeah, and I still have I still have trouble pronouncing Matt's last name. Graining. Graining. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine, imagine how many ways he's heard that before. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I'm, Michael, I know your time uh, is, is valuable, and I don't want to keep you too long. We've been, uh, sure. we've been out this for about a half an hour. Um, I've had a great time. Do you, um, I, I know you're busy. This, this is the middle of your day. So um, we, we can close down now, but uh, I can't let you go un, unless we uh, do a deep dive. Are you ready for a deep dive? Sure, absolutely. Fantastic. Let's do this. Deep dive. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> okay, how this works, Michael, is I have chosen five questions just okay. for you. We want to learn okay. as much as we can about Michael Price. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm a little scared. Now remember, okay. no, 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 no. Don't be scared. There, there are no <laughs> wrong answers. <laughs> okay. This is just the thing I do on my show to to great, get great. to know my guests that much more. <laughs> sure. Are you ready? Absolutely. Fantastic. Let's do the first one. Question one. <laughs> All right, Michael. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is probably a bologna and cheese sandwich <laughs> from any deli. I grew up I grew up eating bologna and cheese and I love bologna and cheese. That comedy writes itself, you know. Bologna and American. <laughs> I had to give that to you. That writes itself. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Question two. <laughs> what is your favorite historical figure? Favorite historical figure. Wow, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> boy, uh, I'm just going to say uh, he's not my favorite <laughs> because he did a really <laughs> terrible thing. But I remember reading a lot of books about the Kennedy assassination and Lee Harvey Oswald. So let's say right now I'm going to say Lee Harvey Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah. Oh man, I got to give you that. He did shoot and kill President Kennedy. I used to be a conspiracy guy, but I believe that he is the lone, lone assassin. Uh, oh really? I do. I firmly believe it. Well, uh, I'm going to go with that, but uh, you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have a dog in that hunt. <laughs> okay. Very good. All right. Let's go. Question three. All right, Michael, if you woke up tomorrow as an animal, what animal would you choose to be? Oh, probably a dog. I, we have three golden retrievers at my house, so I would be one of those One of those three. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, the, the answer we were looking for was meerkat. Oh, you said there are no <laughs> wrong answers. <laughs> well, I, I don't have complete control of the judges. You know, <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> All right, very good, very good. Next. Question. Well, you're out in L.A., so I got to ask you, are you spring, summer, fall, or winter? 
I'm a spring person, I think. Oh, yeah, I uh, love spring. Yeah, love I'm, spring. You did yeah. well. You did well. Yeah, very good. <laughs> And the final question. Final question. <laughs> if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? My God. I would be a pumpkin. Because then that way, I was born in October, so my birthday's around Halloween, so I'd be a big star at Halloween. I'd a, be a pumpkin. A big pumpkin? That's right. I got to give you that. Pumpkin. I got to give you that too. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people would say pumpkin. <laughs> I expect a tomato, <laughs> yeah. but hey, that might be a... Well, tomato is a fruit. Yeah, that well, yeah. I, actually, you know, the Supreme Court, didn't the Supreme Court actually say That's it was right. a vegetable? They did say yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> and I made that mistake on someone else, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I don't eat them much anyway. So, hey, listen, Michael, it was a lot of fun having you on. I, I, I certainly appreciate it. Um, I had a great time, too. Thank you. Tell folks uh, how they can get to uh, to see um, F is for Family again. F is for Family is on Netflix. So if you have a Netflix subscription, great. If you don't, get one. Uh, it's only available on Netflix. Uh, it's three seasons. There are a total of 26 episodes currently. We'll have 10 more out a year or so from now. And that's Netflix. And The Simpsons, of course, is on Fox every Sunday night at 8 o'clock. Binge watch both, my friends. Binge watch right. both. <laughs> well, if you binge watch The Simpsons, you would, you might not live anymore. You may not. <laughs> Six hundred. You may take you a couple of years to get it, through. It really would. Oh, I'd love to do the math on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, actually, a couple of years ago, when I believe it was the fifth hundred episode was coming out, they did a thing where they staged a kind of like a marathon. You know those dance marathons they used to have. Oh, anymore? sure, sure. This dance was a drop. Simpsons viewing marathon, and they set up a big tent. Uh, on Hollywood Boulevard, where they brought people in, like to see if they could watch all 500 episodes straight through, uh, nonstop. And I believe it was it took about four or five days, perhaps straight through. And it was like literally people were like falling down asleep and like passing out and 24 seven. <laughs> yeah, it was 24 seven. Wow. With like bathroom breaks and like maybe a half hour to nap here and there. <laughs> and uh, well, I went a couple of my a couple of friends of mine from the show. We went and like visited it, like around day five, whatever. And like it just looked like I don't know. <laughs> it <looked> like, <laughs> Two days it after Woodstock, like, right? <laughs> it looked like uh, a war zone of like people who were shell shocked, and you know, I think they wish they hadn't gotten into it. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's what happens if you try to binge. So do it, do it in. Uh, Binge responsibly. Binge responsibly. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again, my friend. And uh, thank you. Tell everyone there we said howdy, and and I wish you the best of uh, the luck on on both shows, and hopefully we'll have you back on. Uh, anytime. Thanks uh, so much. All right. Thanks, man. We'll see you. Okay. Bye. 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 And cut. <laughs> that was great. Thanks, man. Hey, thank you, Michael. I really do appreciate it. Um, this, this is a startup thing for me, more, more of a hobby than anything else, but I'm going to try to promote this as much as I possibly can, of course. And, and uh, I'll tweet it, of course, you know, oh. when, uh, when you let me know, and uh, cool. I'll make sure people watch it. Fantastic. I, I so appreciate you taking time out of your day, man. I do. Sure. My pleasure. Thanks, thanks to David, the producer, okay. for uh, hooking us up. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, buddy. Have, have a good day. Take care. You too. Well, there you have it. That was Michael Price, everyone. Famed writer and producer for The Simpsons and also writer, producer, and co-creator for F is for Family, starring Bill Burr on Netflix. I want to thank Michael for being on the show today. I had a really good time. Special thanks goes out to David, the producer, who actually set us up for this interview. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. And I want to thank all of you who have watched this uh, program. That's going to do it for me tonight. I wish all of you a safe, uh, safe and happy day. And remember, make sure you treat others the way you want to be treated. If everyone did that, the world would be a better place, all right? See you live.